Because, like, oh, if I went to here. Oh, dang, it's saying now. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it is free form. Or if it's a thing like, you know, apparently, like, you pull up and then you just, like, tug it and it'll go up. So if you, like. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like this has a little. Why don't you just, like, why don't you, like, why do you buy cheap shit, Dallas? <laughs> What kind of cut rate production is this, bro? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh. Um, I've been eating, but we're going to start this because that is a good segue into my question for you. Dang, ding, 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 ding. Yo, this thing does go hard. I don't care what nobody said. Jesse and Adam weren't. They needed to move a little bit, dog. I've never seen Jesse. <laughs> oh, we did at the games. <laughs> Were you there? No. Dude, we went to the after Hold party. Hold on. Hold on. You've never seen Jesse dance? You're at the after party at the games. I saw Bruh, him dance. You saw him dance, dance. Oh, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Dude, Uh-oh. we got to put the video from Tropic <laughs> yeah, Thunder Yeah, he's danced here. better than all of us. The video from Tropic Thunder? Yeah. Remember when he dressed up? <laughs> yeah. You saw oh, the video of him dancing. Oh, my gosh. Yes. We're putting yes. that up. You've never yeah, seen Jesse dance? That's, that's a cutaway video. Come that's on, not, man. It's not going to go right there. Yeah. It's taking the whole thing. No, that's thing, taking though. the whole screen, dude. Heads up. Heads up. It's another one. That is literally the best video ever. If you've never seen Tropic Thunder, before you watch this, go to the end credit scene, watch that, and then watch the video. It Look, is, I'll it play is, them both. I'll, just, play them both, I'll play them both. It that, is so Jesse good. never has Jesse's to dance again. You. He never has to dance again. Dude, that was honestly like one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Yeah, that's and especially like 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 I said, I just said like I've never seen Jesse dance, and I haven't besides that video, and that's why the video is so awesome because you just would never expect him to do that. By the way, he was on the last episode. If you guys want to go back and listen, and Adam and Jesse. After are both on you it. show that video, he's never coming back. That's all right. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't watch this one. You know, he watches them all. Dude, we might be able to tone him out because he doesn't watch know anything about football. So if we're just open this thing talking about football, he's like, ah, whatever. Just gonna oh yeah. Well, one, so. Anyways, oh, yeah, that Canadian life. It's so good. It's such a good video. Anyways, all right. We were just talking about football, and I was on social media. And I was listening to this uh, podcast, and they ask an awesome question. So, for both of you guys, if you had one year to completely dedicate to an Olympic sport, which one do you think you would train for to have a shot to not get last at the Olympics? One year to train, like, everything. Which Olympics? Any any. Summer or winter? Doesn't matter. Just pick a sport. If you had one year and that's all you could do, what sport do you think you would do to not get last place? I think the... Like, like what sport do you think you could do? The only dedicate? thing I can think of is, like, bobsled, but that's a team. Still, still. I yeah. think I, I think I'd bobsled. bobsled with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's it for me. For, I think for most people, bro. What I mean, what else? That's a, that's a good one. I didn't think about it too much. I was just like, well, dude, track and field's gone. I remember the guy said javelin. I'm like, no way. Yeah, I, I no saw chance. that too. Dude, There's no, no way. No way. There's no way. Like, first off, training javelin to be able to throw. Yeah. You're ripping something before you even get. There's no way you could. So I think all track and field's gone. Yeah. I just think of uh, Step Brothers with a javelin. <laughs> was it Step Brothers? No, it's not Step Brothers. What movie is that? <laughs> what? At the beginning of it, where he throws a javelin and like it like spikes right next to her, and then that's how he has the conversation with her. I don't remember. No, that. it's a uh, it's a soccer movie. Um, oh, what is that soccer movie where he becomes a soccer coach? Been it like Beckham? No, Will Ferrell. <laughs> I don't. Know. I don't. Know becomes a soccer coach for his kids' soccer against his dad. No, I've never seen that movie. Oh my god! I'm gonna look at what it's called. You guys keep talking. Okay. What do you think? Olympics, you have to think summer, winter. 
track and field, there's not one event, any of us, we don't know anybody that can be competitive at any of those events. Zero. Yeah. We need to like, pull up a list of. I think maybe, I don't, don't know. It's called Kicking and Screaming. So I've never seen it. Oh my gosh, bro. You need to watch it. It's great. Okay. Um, Ellie Turner would be good at like throws. Dude, I think no, she would. Ellie would demolish bobsled. Oh yeah, she would kill bobsled. That would be so good for her. She would kill bobsled. I think she could be a good thrower as well. In in track and field, even I think I think she could. But I okay. mean, Dude, I think, yeah, the bobsled could be good. I'd like to say like curling or something. Oh, a lot of technique yeah. to it, but like a year to like just <laughs> yo Loki. Why didn't I say cur- like I curling? I love curling. Curling could be again. Sick. It's team. It's team. I know, but and like, you could be one of those four positions. Yes. Like you could do well. What about badminton? No, dude, I do those two. <laughs> no, I'm telling you right now, you <laughs> you are not messing with those people that play badminton because they're like six four. Dude, there's Ooh, some range. Like sports I've never heard of. Curling is another good one. Is croquet th- in the Olympics? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Croquet. I just list up a list of Olympic sports. So did I. Why, what is military pat- patrol? I just saw that. Like, what do you? <laughs> I think it's marching or something. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, cur- bro, curling. You could break into curling for real. Yeah, I don't. I think that's a pretty easy question to answer for us. It's harder for Ellie Turner. I think Ellie could do well. Ellie has a, few like a couple, couple choices. Yeah, us is like no, no chance. No. At anything like curling, I think there's like I could just get lucky. On what the about what about just individual though? Like you don't get to be on a team. It's just you. Olympics. I saw someone in the comments say like a uh, marathon, because just because there's injuries. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's you like, just finish, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not be, everybody's gonna make it. That would be the only like chance I'd have to not get last. I oh, think, in maybe most individual no, uh, maybe decathlete. Like maybe. Yeah, but Not they're, they're still special because you're still <clears throat> throwing. Yeah, you have running. to throw a javelin. Still. Those guys are freaking crazy good at what they do. Yeah, there's no place, no place for us. <laughs> if if CrossFit got added, you would definitely not get last at that. But I, hope not. I would. So <laughs> that's, that's not that's not the thing, baby. That's yeah. tough. It is. Yeah, that's tough. a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't think they're all specialists, you know. Yeah. So. To go from being a generalist to a specialist, it doesn't really happen very often. Yeah. That's a tough route. That's a good well, question, though. We are CrossFitters, so we should talk about CrossFit. But uh, this is your first, like, open in how many years? A long time. 2017. Do you remember what you got in 2017? Overall, what place? I didn't finish. <laughs> like, I... When's the last open that you've, like, finished? 2000... I think two years before that, 2015 or 16. Do you remember what your, your worldwide ranking was? Um, 2015 was when they were still doing regional stuff, and I was <clears throat> um, I was I got 27th in the region when it was Northwest. Still. Do you remember what it was worldwide, though? No, I don't remember Do you worldwide. have an account? Yeah, but my phone's down there. Oh. I'll look it up, and then okay. we'll put it up. But yeah. I was not – I think I was like – I don't know, like top two thousand. I wasn't like top top. It's the really the year I like. What do you do? You know what you are after week two? What you were sitting worldwide? Uh, I was like twelve thousand, bro. <laughs> like twelve thousand. <000. laughs> what did you do better in week one or week two? Uh, week two I did better than week one. Week one the the dumbbell snatch workout. I th- I think that I had better in me. I just didn't approach it. Like if if I were to redo it, I wouldn't do it the same way. Yeah, because because there's parts of <clears throat> there's parts of me that through the open, like I wanted to see, and the thing that we've been working on, or I've been working on, based on something you told me, is like yo push in the middle, and then yeah. like who cares? Yeah, and that's kind of where I feel like I am now. Like I'm trying to get in better shape. That's my goal, and that's what I did in the first workout. I was like I went and I tried to just be like well, I'm just gonna the second set of twenty one. I'm like I'm gonna try and go fast here. And yeah. see what happens. And I saw what happened, and it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't well, like I could it, keep you're going. You're not even halfway with the workout on the round of twenty-one. Yeah, that's like the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the middle teens. I mean, but it's like everybody's going to try and pick up on the fifteens. Yeah. You kind of have to do it when people don't want to do it. 
Yeah. And that put me in a position where I didn't do as well as I think I could have yeah. if I were to redo it. Yeah. No, I think about that. Like one of the things that we talked about a lot was like, let's say the workout ends with like a 50 cal row and like you start out, you're at like 1200 and you start building, 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 you end at like 2000 like cows per hour, like to finish the last like five cows. Yeah. And then you start thinking about it and you're like, well, if it was another five cows, could I have held 2000? And it's like, well, maybe. And I was like, well, 10 cows more. And it's like, well, man, you, if you said that, you probably should start your kick earlier. And you almost want at the very end of the workout, you start to like drop back off. Yeah. Because you know that like you gave everything you had to finish, but if you finish it and you're still in your sprint, it's like, well, how much sooner could you have started your sprint? Yeah. And I think for that, that dumbbell snatch workout was almost the opposite of that. I mean, a lot of people ended slower, I think, than they wanted to because they paced it wrong. But more times than not, especially in a 20 minute workout, you, you end it uh, like kind of like week two and you start to like pick up the pace in the last little bit. And yeah. it's like, well, could you have held that longer? Should you started your kick earlier? Yep. Which uh, that was, I think a big difference of the two. I think if, so we're not even like, this is the thing I want to talk is like overview of workout week to week to week. But in terms of training, I think where I am as an athlete right now, the thing we were talking about was getting used to pushing in the middle and then because we're training, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like we want to find out where that is. So then when we go and perform, it's, we kind of know. Uh, we kind of know what the hell is going on and we can push ourselves to like push our ability. Um, I treated the open workouts kind of like training sessions rather than like, let me do the best I can. Like I didn't redo any of the workouts. Um, <laughs> and I think there's value in that for me not redoing anything, but <laughs> anyways, continue. I'm listening. no, if, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really do anything to like kind of do the best that I can. It was like, this is my best approach to this workout as I am today and doing them again, I would do it differently. My old approach when I think about, uh, how to finish workouts is like, I used to think, mm, how far out from finishing can I kick? That was what I used to think. Like mm -hmm. how far out can that be? And then that always put me to where it's like, you know, you pick up in the last minute or whatever it is. Like, yeah, it, it, people can, kind of the first 80% of the workout lollygag and feel however they want, do whatever they want. And the last 20%, if they like push really hard, then they throw up and they feel like, Oh, I killed it today. <laughs> and it was like, I don't want to ever get to the point where I, I feel like I pushed really hard just in the last little bit. Yeah. I want to like find my capacity. That's my new goal. I want to, I'm searching for my capacity. What, what is the most that I can do? And that's just kind of where I am now. Zach, you're chilling at, 5,812. Place? Mm -hmm. I just validated your score down. Thanks. Not that long ago, so. I'm 5,000th place, baby. I'm closer to Dude, six. That, 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 that last six I'm 6,000. His, his last place. score was his best score by far, right? Um, Yeah. But what was his placing uh, for, for week one, two, and three? Week one, 12,000th. Uh, week two, almost 7,000th. And then week three, 5,800th. Yeah. So 6,000th? Yeah, basically. So... You know, that's a good representation of what yeah. the thing. I, I, I do think week three would be like if you had to pick one workout to like out of those three to pick like the fittest person. I think week three is the best like indicator indicator of that because <clears throat> there's like skill involved mm -hmm. and then there's gymnastics. And I think that 135 is heavy enough to like stump people. Yeah. So like I think it has a little bit of everything and it's kind of sprinty but then pacing really matters like there's a lot more to it whereas like week one was just like go yeah and then week two was it was more of like a pacing workout than like a yeah like like you had to pace it for you the best possible yeah. way um like it was like for me when i did that when when i did week one i was kind of bummed because i should have jumped all my burpees but i did step ups i did it right after and after the announcement i watched jeff do it he freaking i thought was flying through it so i was like oh, i'm just gonna hit the same strategy as jeff you know i saw brent do jumping burpees and he kind of blew up a bit so i was like all right well i'm just gonna do stepping burpees it'll be good and i finished I was like man i think the jumping burpees would have been faster for me and it would have hurt the same you thought that 
instantly after doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. After I'm like, man, I think I could have jumped and gone. I mean, there's no way I was putting up some of those times like mid fives. <laughs> like I think I could have got close to six minutes, maybe got into like high fives, but who knows? I didn't, like I said, I didn't redo them week two. I actually was really happy with everything about the workout besides I missed on double unders, uh, that one round. Yeah. I mean, I, I went back and counted. I actually did 50. I thought, but <laughs> it is what it is. Like, that's what happens in competition that like, you have to be sure. Like if I was smart, I probably would have done 51 every yeah, time. But Cause in those situations, you're just looking at your judge. Like, yo. yeah, it was kind of like, it was so hectic in there. I couldn't hear my judge. And, uh, like I said, I, I missed it, went back, ended up being like 13 or 14 seconds when we went back and like counted, which is deadlifts, possibly finishing the deadlifts just in that. And it kind of threw off the <clears throat> momentum that I felt like I had. Cause I was kind of getting to that point where I was like, okay, like start throttling down. Now you can kind of start to bury Colton. And it kind of just took it to like, okay, Hey, like let's not mess up the rest of the workout. Yeah. And I kind of yeah. went into that mode, the rest of it. So I think I could have possibly got to the double unders, but regardless of that, I was really happy with how I rode. Um, kind of just stayed at the same pace the whole time, which I was pretty pumped about. Um, and then week three, uh, I was actually pretty happy about that one too. I hit it. I finished. I had a little mess up with my grips, which I wasn't feeling great going into the workout. And then my pull-ups didn't feel good, but I was like, man, it's probably just me. Like, I'm not going to blame my grips and stuff. And then I hit the first five rounds. And then during my break, I was like, okay, something's wrong because, there's no world in 50 chest bars because I can do that unbroken uh-huh. normally where I'm <clears throat> this blown up like with my forearms because I like I don't know if I mean anybody that does cross it knows when you're doing toes to bar or pull ups and stuff and your grip starts to get blown your kip at the bottom starts to get like less because mm-hmm. if you kip really hard into a big swing it's like more pressure on your grip so I was starting to do that on the on rounds four and five and I'm like dude I'm only 30 chest to bars in and my grip is this blown. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. You you said you noticed. What was it about the grip? Because you, you said it to me, and I was like, what? this dude's talking about grips. It's so specific and nuanced. But right when you gave me, oh, these are the grips that feel good, and you gave me the one that didn't feel good, and I tried it, it was like, oh, damn. Like, I felt, yeah. I felt the difference instantly yeah. when you made the contrast, like, very apparent. Yeah, and it's, it's super minimal. Um, obviously, I train a lot, so, like, I really know – how it feels, but the thing I, if, if anybody's trying to think of a good way to describe it to someone, like if you guys got a brand new pair of knee sleeves and you put them on, you're like, oh wow, those things are tight and they feel like really good and they help you with a squat. And mm-hmm. then you have like a pair of knee sleeves that you've had for like a year or two. They're a lot more stretchy and forgive me. It's not like the knee sleeves are falling apart, but that just happens with wearing tails. It happens with shoes, happens with everything. So I have that basket um, in here where it's kind of like a community box of grips. And before every competition I do, I get new grips because of this reason, but it was the open. I thought the grips that I had would work fine. Obviously not. No, but, uh, that they just, they just been used because all those grips in there are all the grips that I've gotten rid of before competition. So those are the grips I've trained with. And right when I go to competition, I get a brand new pair and then hit competition with them. So I was using them. And what happens is like victory grips, Like, I'm not hating on victory grips whatsoever. They're the best grips that I have used and found for everything from muscle ups to like ring muscle, excuse me, from ring muscle ups to bar muscle ups, toes to bar, no matter what. Yeah, he's not getting paid to say that either. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by victory grips whatsoever, (laughs) but they're the grips that hold up the best. Like a lot of other grips I'll rip or anything like that, but just like any other grip, I've had those grips are probably two years old. They get stretchy if that makes any sense. So like the Velcro wears out and the grips get like stretchy. So you get a new pair and you try to like kind of pull on them. They're pretty tight. Like there's a little give, but not much. And mm-hmm. as they get old, they start to like stretch. So like if you held the grip up and it, there's like the strap that comes out, it kind of makes like an L when they're brand new. And as they stretch, it kind of like comes into like a, like it starts to fade because the grip is more like to, a J. It just yeah. gets a little bit soggy is yeah. what I noticed when yeah. comparing the two. So then when you hop up, when I kind of hop up, you can kind of see I have a callus here from it. Cause my grips scrunch up like this cause they're so tight. But when they get stretchy, you do that and it tries to cinch on your wrist. It doesn't cinch as good mm-hmm. because the grip is stretching in your hand. And then in turn, it's almost worse than using no grips. Because yeah. at least when you use no grips, like 
it's not like the reason why I use grips for me at least is so I don't tear my hands. It's not to like help with the grip necessarily. Obviously it does a little bit, but when you have bad grips or if you don't know how to use grips properly, it's almost worse. Yeah. You know, like if, if you give someone that's never used grips before and they hop up on the pull up bar, they're like, this feels so much worse than normal. Yeah. And I think you, you that, I was like that. that for a long time. Yeah. Like you, every time you, you forced you them, like, Hey Zach, you need to start using these things. And you gave me a pair of grips and I loved them because they were the ones that didn't have the finger holes. Yeah. Um, and I, I would never use them. Like yeah. I would always just use my hands because yeah. that's what felt comfy. Yeah. But then once I started to realize. There's oh, a this, technique to it. This is a technique. It's a new thing. It's just like knee sleeves or anything else. It's just a piece of equipment. But in the beginning, it's like super tough to use them. Yeah. Like you, you feel like you're Especially the way harder. you use them is different than how other people use them, I think. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, they were a little bit stretchy during my minute break. I switched pairs and during my muscle ups, my grip felt so much better, which is normally not how it goes. Muscle ups would like smoke your grip a little bit more. I don't think I would have like gone crazy faster. Like I said in the last video, I think I could have, I wanted to go sub nine and I think I could have done that maybe if my grip wasn't as blown. Like I said, who knows, but obviously probably not my best open performance overall, but I think the things that I've been working on a lot weren't some of the things that were tested in the open, but I'm honestly really happy with where my fitness is and more than anything, I'm healthy right now, which is like a lot different than last year. That's why I took some time off and I didn't compete. I just wanted to feel good. And if like anybody knows just feeling good makes working out so much more fun. <laughs> and then when you're having fun working out, you tend to get a lot better results. Feels Whereas good to feel good, baby. Feels Come good on. to feel good. And obviously <laughs> there's bumps and bruises that kind of, come with the volume that we do. But, uh, I had a lot of fun this open that like, I did every workout on Thursday, right. When they came out, I know there's a handful of athletes that do that as well. So, um, it was really fun. I mean, week one, we, I hit it on Thursday, traveled to the Arnold for the whole weekend. Week two was the open announcement here, which was absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. Such a cool opportunity. And then week three was a good way to wrap it up. It's, it's yeah. From week to week. Cause a lot of people do it at the affiliate or at the affiliate. And it's kind of like Friday Night Lights. It's a thing. It's the, yeah. They do it, do it, do it. You each week, and even me, as a result of just working out with you and training with you guys, it's like every week was so different um, yeah. in how we did the workouts, uh, which I thought was, I don't know, I thought it was really fun and unique to this year. Like, hey, yeah. that's how we did the workouts this year. And I think if, I'm not telling people, oh, you should go outside your affiliate, blah, blah, blah. But just being able to do it in different environments, it gave each one like an individual experience. And oh, I thought, for sure. I thought it was super dope this year that we all kind of got to get down like that. It was fun to, I mean, week to week was fun. It was also different. What was your favorite workout? Mm, like Again, it's like each one's really unique. Um, but in terms of workout, workout, I think I really liked what happened week three. But I think that maybe as a result of like week one to week two to week three, yeah, it, it's like week three felt like a banger. It felt like it felt like a workout where you figured it out as you were doing it or after. Like yeah. you didn't know before. Yeah. I know a lot and of people, people. Like, dude, you watch every single video, like tips and tricks. Everyone's <laughs> like, go slower than you think. Break <laughs> yeah. it up more than you think. Yeah. I promise you. And time and time again, everyone's like, I should have broken yeah, up more. And I'm dude, like, dude, yeah. literally every video you watch, everyone was like, break it up more, break it up more. And I don't think anybody listened. I don't, but, but how, cause you think, you think, I don't, you think I, you're did going Did you feel slow. like that? Did you feel it? Cause you experience of an athlete, like you have so much experience, you know how long reps are going to take. Most times before workouts, you can pick your time pretty close. Yeah. And before most people go, a lot of different people, if you've seen them work out, you can be like, oh, it's going to be like this. Before I did the workout, you said, hey, Zach, week one, you and Adam were pretty close. Week two, you and Adam were pretty close. We watched Adam do the workout, and I swear, I swear, when I watched Adam do it, I was like, dang, I'm better than him at bar muscle-ups. That's Maybe I am, maybe I'm yeah. not. But, like, technique-wise, yeah. I feel like my muscle-ups are not, I'm not going to chicken wing. I'm not going to get to that point. Like, yeah. I'm not going to look like that. But then when I saw Adam's time, like my brain shifted a little bit. Adam I started getting like 14, scared. 14, like just over 14 minutes. Adam was. Yeah. He was like, like, like 14, 20, like somewhere in that yeah. range, like not 14, 30 or, but, but yeah. not 14, 05. And like my brain shifted from that point forward. I was like, damn, 
I thought I was going to be somewhere like I was thinking like three minutes slower ish than Justin. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm like, if Justin goes nine, I'll probably be like 12, 13 ish. And I saw Adam do that. And I started being like, <laughs> 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 like, no, because looking at it, it doesn't look like something that no, it's like, yo, it's 50 Chester bar. Like yeah. that's not, that's not going to smoke me out. It's, it's Fran with Chester bar. We've done that before. And, and it, I didn't know how I was going to feel in, until I started. But the reason I think, the only reason I finished is because. Like, 1458 I, was his time, by the 1457, way. 1457, don't disrespect. 57, 57. <laughs> the only reason I finished, though, is because, like, the break it up stuff. Like, yeah. that was it. Like, I spent more time bent over, and, and I hate that position and that look. But, like I told you today, minute eight, at minute eight, I was like, if I if I do exactly what I'm doing right now, I can finish. But if I change one thing, like I'm not going to finish, bro. Yeah. Like I had to do all the things. But that's and, like super, I was telling you earlier, like that's so important to know is like to realize at the eight minute mark that like it's going to be close to finish because then it's like, okay, like I have seven more minutes. Yeah. And like you start to pace it out based on that instead of being like, just get this next rep done. Like just go fast. The next thing you know, you're just blown up and you can't do anything by the end. And I think, that's what's so important about like kind of knowing where you're going to finish in a workout is like your pacing. Because if you have an idea of a workout, like an eight minute workout is a lot different than a 12 minute workout. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot different than a 15 minute workout mm -hmm. for people that are like a lot higher level. So knowing about how long the workout's going to take is going to make a big difference in your pacing. Do you think I felt this after week three? Cause it, it was um, week one, you, you, you could come out too hot and burn and it hurts and blah, blah, blah. I feel as though I did that. Week two was like, you can come out too hot, but then you backing off on your row kind of saves you. Yeah. Week three was like, you, you want to be really specific and disciplined with how you do it. Yeah. So it like the theme kind of makes sense to me for the open now is like each one was a different degree of pacing yeah. is what I saw from the open. Not technical ability or it, it, it all felt pacing was like the theme kind of that's what that's kind of where I am now I think like we look at the announcements and we look at the clues and we look at all those things and in retrospect we can be like oh I think this kind of makes sense now seeing week one week two week three and feeling how I felt like oh my gosh like if I change one thing I'm not going to finish like just being able to finish is what my brain shifted to like after yeah. I was done with the the first five rounds and then going to the next five so I don't know. Maybe that's the theme of it, and maybe that's where yeah. uh, they wanted people as athletes. Yeah, but. yeah. I think week one for this is talking about the open for people that are regional slash games athlete. I think week one was just like open up and go. Like yeah. it's a short enough workout, and the movements were simple enough that even if you blow up, you're gonna be okay for for those athletes. Week two. Like you said, you can kind of save yourself on the row. You open up too fast. You kind of just back off on the row mm -hmm. and do it. But that one was a lot of transition work because, yeah. like, I think the way that we laid it out in the open was not ideal for transitions. There was a lot yeah, of transitions in there. And I think if I retested that workout, I have a lot of confidence that I could get halfway done with the double unders, maybe even finish. I mean... I finished the row and I think in order to finish the rest of the workout, like 45 seconds, I think I would need. Mm -hmm. And I think I had like 12 to 15 seconds on the mess up of the double unders. Yeah. But so, you so, now up so much. Yeah, so now I'm down to 30 seconds. And then I think it was a 10 round workout. I think with a better setup, that's probably like a second or two around. Mm -hmm. So just be generous and say 10 seconds. So now I only need 20 more seconds. So I think there was a chance, and that's why I'm saying I think transitions mean so much because you could have got my score and just rode a, like a 148. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, it, it's hard to make Which, up time unless you're like, just transitions are lightning fast, and then you just have a manageable pace on the row. Yeah, and in that... In, and you're not messing up double unders. In that situation, you rowing 148 doesn't help with the setup, doesn't yeah. help you at all. Yeah. Like, if... It yeah. wouldn't help you I had at to all make because you can't, on the row. you can't speed anything else up. It's yeah. just not messing up on double unders and then touch and go deadlifts for you. That's like toothpick weight, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you got, deadlift you got got 600 hard, pounds, babe. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, what about week three? What was week three for, for regional and game style? Like, 
Does it affect you? Does the open, do you feel like you learn anything through the open? You? Oh, 100%. Okay. I mean, okay. it's definitely nerve wracking competition. This year, I tried to not put a lot of pressure on myself and kind of have fun with it because I think the open is getting more like that. You know, I mean, I had no pressure on myself to win. I wasn't trying to, that wasn't my goal at the open. My goal for this year's open was to have fun and like enjoy it. I mean, that's why I was just like, Oh yeah, I'm going to the Arnold. I'm just going to hit this on Thursday, pack, get out of here for the weekend. Week two, it's the announcement. I'm having everyone here. If you're trying to get the top score in the world, you probably don't want to do an open announcement because Mm -hmm. it's, uh, (laughs) it's, you're, it's, yeah, it's just not ideal, you know? I mean, obviously, you can get a good record. It'd be cool to look up. I, I only know, I think Matt is, like, the only person that comes to mind that's won an open workout. In that thruster. And done the announcement. Yeah. Like, the, it's very hard to do. Um, Yeah, the thruster one you did with Tia. Yeah. That was um, badass. That was tight. Yeah, it was sick. Yeah. But that that was kind of, like, my, my goal for the open is, like, not put pressure on myself. I'm always going to go hard once the clock starts. You yeah. know, like, that. that's never a question for me, but... Just trying to like take that pressure off and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna have fun and do it. And then now that they're taking top 25, percent it's a lot more like that. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't have to put the pressure on myself, and I get to enjoy the open because it's freaking awesome. Like you said, we had a different experience every week. Um, having everyone throw down here after the week two announcement was awesome. Uh, dropping into affiliates, watching everyone do the workout. It's just like, no, dude, I'm just gonna enjoy this time because it's early on in the season. The open is freaking fun to like see all your best friends and stuff grind through a workout, you know, like, uh, it was super cool. I mean, I'll tell you what though, like quarterfinals is different. I view that as pretty much the same thing as semifinals and the games, like they're obviously different. I am training for the CrossFit game, so I'm not trying to like strategize my training to peak for quarterfinals slash semifinals because I'm confident in my fitness that long as I execute, I will make it past those stages. But it's very real. Like, I am trying to get on top of the podium, like the leaderboard for quarterfinals and semifinals. The yeah. Open is, is not necessarily like that, but the Open, or sorry, the quarterfinals and semifinals is very much like competition. Different we got six game. workouts. We got four or five days to do them. You don't really, I mean, yes, there's a chance to redo them technically, but it's like one and done strategy matters. Like you got to open up and go. And that's kind of like, I think the first stage of the season where people can, you can start seeing where people are. Cause it's a, it's a well-rounded test for one. Yeah. You start to find out like, okay, like this is where my holes are. Um, this is where my strong points at. You're going to be able to test the things that you worked on because there's going to be probably five, maybe six workouts and they're going to test strength. They're going to test endurance. They're going to test barbell cycling, gymnastics. Like they're going to hit everything. And you start to see more complex movements of rope climbs, ring muscle ups, a heavier barbell, a max. And me and Adam were just talking about it. Like there was a lot of stuff that was not tested during the open, it, but which it, is, it, it's hard. There was only three workouts, but for, fit people there was a lot of stuff left out for for i think that's the design the design of the open just from looking at the two things you just said that you got from the open are things that i think everybody could get from the open yeah like i think a lot of people can go through the experience of the open and you're not you're not going to find a bunch of holes but you're gonna like kind of tap into the community of who's yeah. doing the workouts and kind of check in all oh, these are my people this is I see this person. I see kind yeah. of where I am. You know, I'm in what place am I in? 5,000? 6,000? 5, yeah, 58. I'm like, okay. All right, yeah. cool. That's me. And now th- there's not, it's not a, a clear um, picture of one's overall fitness, but it's no. just like cracking us off learn, and getting us going. You can learn so much. Like I go through and it's like, even though I was more lackadaisical. It doesn't mean I was not trying on any of the workouts. I want to make that clear. I gave everything I had to every single workout. Yes. Looking back, hindsight's always 20, 20. There's a lot of stuff I could do better, but like, that's the learning experience, you know? Um, like you want your first go, like to not think about it, kind of hit the workout and you want it to be as close as you can to your best result. And I don't think I did that on any of the three workouts. And I think that's one of the biggest things I want to take away is like, you can toss me in at any point and I can perform very close to my absolute best. And yeah. I did not do that in any of the three workouts. I mean, I think week one, I should have trusted my fitness. Yes, Jeff put up a fast time. He looked super, super good during the workout. I saw 
uh, Brent do jumping burpees and he didn't hang, but I should have trusted my fitness and been like, yeah, no, that's, like, that's interesting. Like, like I should have just done that, but yeah. I was, I didn't like roll the dice, but, and like, that's one saying, of the things Adam said yeah. in the FaceTime call right before you went, was like, it kind of is what it is. Just trust your fitness and yeah. boom. And like, like I said, I went hard. I did stepping burpees. I don't think I could have gone any faster doing stepping burpees, but if I retested it, I would have done jumping burpees. And I think that would have gave me a shot to go faster. Who knows if it would have, I could have just blown up, but, but you feel like there was meat on the bone. There There was meat on the bone there. And I think I was bummed that I didn't try that first Uh because I know like what I did with jumping or stepping up burpees. I knew I could do that. I should have tried something different and done jumping burpees. And you go into week two, it's like the mess up with the double unders. Like what was happening was, is during our double unders, me and Colton were pretty much neck and neck. And his judge was counting his double unders out loud, like one, two, three, four, five, six. And I was just ahead of him. <laughs> yeah, and then my dude. job wasn't counting out loud. And he wouldn't say, he wouldn't say, and he wouldn't say 10 like 10, yeah. 20, nothing. So he would just put his hand up in the last five. And in the first four rounds, I was doing double unders and I was trying to count in my own head because I couldn't hear my judge. And all I could hear was Colton's. <laughs> so I'd finish 50 and set down my rope and look at my judge. And I was good. I'm like, all right, we're on the same page. And I did that for the first four rounds of like, I counted 50, he counted 50, we're good. So on round five, I was like, no need to look at my judge and be hesitant, just do 50. Yeah. So I did 50, set it down, didn't even look at him, and like went back to my rower, and he counted 48, I counted 50. Because at that time, that's when you were like... And I was starting to go, and and that's what I said. Like I was like, okay, I'm in my groove now. Like I said, I don't need to look at my judge, I got this. Okay. And I messed up, and what I started doing the rounds after is I'd count in my head... And I knew my last five, he put his hand up. So I was like, okay, I need to count. And then when he puts his hands up, I know I have five more. So then that was the way I gauge it after. And like, I'm happy that I figured that out, but should have done that earlier. And in in terms of it's, it's cool. You figured it out, but it's, it's, it's not like, Oh, this is how you approach judges in any competition. That's just that one situation specifically. So it's not something that like is transferable to other things. No, it is. Cause you, you like the judge rules all. Yeah. There's no point in arguing with your judge, nothing, because whatever they say stands. And if you have a disagreement, you figure it out after, yeah. you know? And like for me in that workout, I don't think there was any way like, if I appealed it, like it, I don't know what they, mean. I don't know what they would have done that could have been fair. Yeah. Like, I don't think they could have gave me deadlift reps. Yeah. You like they wouldn't have. And, and I don't think and that was going to be fair. That's, and that's not why. even your ball game. Either. No. And I was like, I was like, whatever. And it's the open, man. Like it, I had fun. Uh, it would have been different though if Colton beat me. I would have been like a little <laughs> salty about it. Like I don't know what they could have done, but also like that sucks. Yeah. Um. So then week week two, you know, there's meat on the bone, but it's for yeah, a different but like, situation. But it, it learns about competition is like being very aware with your judge and make sure you and your judge are on the same page. And do you think that just comes down to a conversation point, beforehand? Yeah, I should I yeah. should have that conversation and understood what he was gonna do. Yeah. So then every single round when I saw his hand go up, I would just count to five in my yeah, head. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what I did the rest of it. But I should have been on the same page before that. So yeah. that's what I learned on the second workout. Going into week three, um, I wasn't feeling good going into it. And my mindset was like, I'm not going to give into that. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to accept that I don't feel good. Like, oh, my grips like this. I, I'm not trying to make excuses. It wasn't even just the grips because that day you didn't, your tummy was a little funny. Yeah, my stomach was messed up. Even yeah. like just recently, like. Yesterday was the first day that it started to feel good. Yeah. I don't know what was going on. I wasn't like puking or anything like that, but my stomach was yeah, just them little doodles, man. I don't even know, <laughs> man. It was not it was not not good. So I just wasn't like on my best game and I was warming up, doing my rehearsal rounds. And I'm like, man, just like I feel Felt. like heavy on those pull ups. Like yep. I'm like, dude, I like normally I'm pretty good with the gymnastics and I was like, whatever. Like I said, sent the workout and come to find out halfway through I switched my grips and it went so much better and after it's like, man, I should just trust myself. You said before the workout, you said it felt funny and you didn't, you were just like, oh, I just feel funny. It's not yeah. the grips. It's just like, I just feel funny. I'm not going to be weird and switch them. Yeah. yeah. And and, I, and then after you're like, uh, I, I should have right. done it. <laughs> yeah. And like, but the thing was though, is like I grabbed or you, you're like, Hey, just change your grips. And I was like, ah, no, it's fine. But then I grabbed them and I put them right next to my pull-up bar. Yeah. But in my head, I was thinking more in the sense of like, Hey, what if my grips rip, my Velcro comes off, whatever it is, I have a backup. Yep. You know, and that's why I've set them there. And this kind of, I probably should have just trusted myself. 
And I like, there are things I did good. Like I had the backup grips. I think I, it was smart of me to not be like, oh man, I don't feel good. Like these grips. Yeah. Cause like, mentally whatever. you didn't like, want like, to play into it. No, though, mentally right? I'm not trying to play into that. So, um, I was really happy that I did that. Even though looking back, there are still things there. Even though I think it was good that I did that. It's still good to know like, Hey man, if, if something doesn't feel right, like nine times out of 10, I'm, I'm probably right. Like I, I, I know the feeling of how things should feel. I train enough. I pay attention to that stuff. Yep. I should trust it. And, and you are, and, and like to not feel good. Like my goal going into the workout was to go sub nine. And I was very much like in that, that realm. I was nine fifteen, So like it, it, it still went really well. And I was happy with it. I mean, there was no way I was going sub eight thirty. like that. Just, I yeah, don't, yeah. That was not in the cards, but I do think I could have gone sub nine. And even though I wasn't feeling good, like my stomach was messed up, I was still performing really close to, to optimal. And I think if I had my grips, like the way I wanted them, I think I could have done it. Yeah. And I don't think my stomach played a factor into it. So yeah. I was happy about that. And I think I was happy that I didn't let the way I was feeling affect me too much going into the workout. Cause I don't think I did bad in the, it wasn't like I was like, Oh man, I don't feel good. I'm going to pace this thing way more than normal. Like I didn't do that. I, yeah. I kind of ran my race given on the first workout. I thought I could do it in like right around that three minute mark. And I did it in three twenty four because I was about to break up the pull-ups because my grip was so blown. I thought I'd be like no more than three ten, but like low threes. I saw Jay Krause them do it in two fifty, And I'm like, all right, that's a little bit fast. Especially if, like knowing what's coming. Yeah. So I was like, I was gonna slow down by like ten or twenty seconds, and I thought that'd be plenty for me. And uh, I think I would have been in that range, but I was like looking at the pull-up bar on rounds four and five, like I might break this up into seven three. I was like, I'm doing chest. I was like, dude, I got muscle ups after this. Like, there's no way. And uh, yeah, it went good, but it was a really, it was a cool open. I mean, I think it was the first time I didn't put pressure on myself and just kind of like hit the workouts. But I'm I definitely like. It got me like really excited, like looking back and analyzing all the workouts. I and mean, then I'm like, man, I'm really excited for quarterfinals to kind of like dial it in, uh, like really start geeking out on strategy, game plan, yeah. whatever it is. Because before we like watch the announcement, obviously I thought about a plan to do, but like I said, I wasn't putting pressure on myself and I'm excited to have that pressure again. I know? feel like, uh, do you feel like you perform better when you, that pressure, I won't say pressure of competition or anything like that, but with the open, because last year it wasn't 25%, and it changed a little bit this yeah. year. Um, I feel like that feeling is something a lot more people can feel, and then the results of the open can be so much better because those people that say they were, what was it last year, top 15% or top 10% to go to quarters? Or yeah, 10. So the people that were like 11 and 8%, yeah. like in that range, they loosen up a lot. Yeah. And then they can perform so much better because yeah. that pressure is not there. So then it's like, as a result of everybody kind of feeling that, uh, yeah, the open is a lot more enjoyable for a lot more people. Yeah. I think yeah. I, it was enjoyable for me. And my, my goal is not, I'm not trying to win the CrossFit games, but I do want to perform the best I can. And it was dope to just like, I didn't redo any of the workouts. Cause it was yeah. like, do I, am I going to redo a workout? Like the dumbbell snatch. I thought about redoing it. I was going to do it Thursday, like a little trial run um, week one. But then after doing it, I was like, if I do it again on a Saturday or Monday, it's like I won't be able to do our normal training. It would yeah. have taken me out of our regular schedule. And that's the first time I've been able to like not redo stuff and stay on. On that, I think it's crazy how many people say the open doesn't matter. And they're just like, whatever. And then how many people redo the workouts? Bro, like so like many people are redoing games it. athlete, it's like. Okay, you can't say that the open doesn't matter to you and then retest a bunch of workouts. Like, it either matters or it doesn't. Like, yes, it's competition. You're going to go all out. But if something happens and you mess up, like, dude, no games athletes not getting top 25%. Yeah. Like, I bet you, I, I don't know what, but, like, I think the top games athletes could do two workouts and not submit a score on week three and still maybe make top 25%. Yeah. And it's like... Because there's... Like, so, I mean, like, those dude, first two like, workouts guys, are getting top 100 in the world. Yeah. I got 12,000 on one yeah. workout. <laughs> It's just, it's just funny to like kind of see the people that like talk like that. And like, it's awesome. Like, I don't think it, it's good or bad to like put pressure on the workout. Like it's competition. Like it's, you need to learn from it. And I think if anybody's like the people that are doing it wrong are the people that aren't learning. And for some people it's like, no, I want to get the best possible score. This is competition. And they learn a lot from that by retesting it, figuring it out. Yeah. And then there's other people that like don't, and I don't, I'm not saying it's right or wrong to care or not care about your score in the open. It's just. 
it's weird to see how many people I, like. I, I'm glad that you said, oh yeah, you know, the best way to do it is be learning because I, I felt, I felt the feeling like if I don't redo it, then I'm not putting myself in the position where I can, I feel like I learned a valuable lesson in that, hey, I'm going to do it Thursday with my boy. We're going to stick to that schedule and I'm going to continue to train because my goal is to get more fit yeah. as I go. And yeah. that was, that's just me. I'm not saying everybody has to be like that, but no. for me, it helped me a lot to be like, all right, I'm going to do it on Thursday. Um, and then after that, it's like my goal is to get yeah. more fit. That's I will say goal. though, like, let's say on week two, I do the announcement and like, I come out at like a 140 pace in the row uh-huh. and like three rounds in or four rounds in, I'm like, uh Oh, and I like drop off to like a 150 to a 155. Mm-hmm. And like for me, rowing something that I need to put a lot of work in compared to the field. And there is a lot of value for me to redo that workout. Yeah. To like, okay, like, am I a bad rower? Like, has I, has my rowing work not been working? Or did I just strategize this wrong? And this is a good workout to figure it out because you can have so much data from everyone else. Yeah. And I think there's times like that where it's like, yes, I would redo a workout, but it's not because of my worldwide score. It's like, it's me. Like, I want to figure out, like, like what's going on with my training, you know, Uh like am I training wrong? Like, and then if I redo it again and I still just blow up, it's like, man, I got to switch up what I'm doing because my rowing work isn't translating to competition. Cause that, but that's the difference is like you said, there's so much data that shows me that my current training is not giving me the result that I like, or is it? And did I just approach this? There's a gray area. And like, like I had to mess up on that open workout. Uh, it was a double under mishap, but I don't think that, like I learned my lesson. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like I need to be on the same pace I, as my judge. Yeah. Whereas like if I messed up on the row pacing or something like that, it's like, okay, well, like, was it like if I had, a, if I didn't have like a clear cut thing of what went wrong, then I would be like, okay, I need to redo this. Yeah. To cause, it out. cause you weren't thinking, how did this one get me? Yeah. And, and do I need to redo it to figure it out? It was like, I know how this one got me and I need to make sure I don't do that again. Yeah. You don't need to try and recreate or do it again. Yeah. It's cause like, I, 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 I know what's wrong. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think like, yeah, like we were talking about pressure earlier and I think I perform really well when the pressure I feel is the pressure I put on myself. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. I know like, excuse me, for a fact that like when I finish a workout, the only thing that matters to me is that, hey, did you do everything you possibly could to give yourself the best shot possible in yeah. that workout? And it's like. Yes, you might make a decision that cost you, but like looking at the situation, was it still the best decision? Yeah, it might not have paid off, but it's like you you, you analyze that in the workout. And as long as you can walk away and be like, dude, that was everything I have. Or even if you make a bad decision, did you do the right things to correct it in the workout? It's like in that thing, like I could have been like, no, I did 50. Like, Mm -hmm. and then it turns into a whole argument and I waste 20 seconds. Like, no, I did the right thing. I just went back, finished my double and just got back on the row, tried to stay calm and did it. It's like, okay, I handled the situation right. Yes, I could have done better. I learned my lesson. I think that's what matters most. I think when things get tricky is when you start listening to that outside pressure about, and I think anyone can relate to that. Like it's uh, like friends, it's coaches, it's um, I mean, for me, there's a lot of people that are looking at my performance and stuff. And there's gonna yeah. be so many people that I would be like, well, Justin didn't have a good open finish, like yada, yada, yada. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to knock anybody. I mean, it's, it's a data point. Like there's people that do really well in the open, like, and you're going to like, dude, like they're fit right now, yeah. you know? And it's like, and they that, should that have, may be their goal is they, to do well. In yeah. The and then they should have credit for doing really well. And that same token is, Hey, if someone did not do well in the open, like, you should be worried about their fitness. But for me, like it doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Like I know what I've been training, what I've been doing. And I am very confident with what I've been doing this off season has made me a more well-rounded athlete. And I think quarterfinals is going to be that first stage of the season where I get to find out if that's true. The open wasn't that that. for me, but I'm really excited for quarterfinals because I think it's going to be a decently well-rounded test where they're going to test a lot of different things and I'm really excited to see like how things stack up then. Hell yeah. So so all right, so we're going from open. Now listen, I I that was the first open I've completed since I don't know, 2016. <laughs> but I'm excited the the thing I told Dallas today is like we had a conversation with Adam. Hold on before we close off the open. If you like just a clear cut thing. If you were to redo one workout from week one, week two, or week three, which one would it be and why? I was going to ask you that earlier, but I think it's better now that we have all that stuff flushed out. Like, 
what workout would you redo personally? Not to be a score whore, but which one would you feel you would learn the most from? And then why would you feel like that's what you learned? Week two, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like I'm... The only mess up I had was that the double unders, and I was really happy with how everything else went. So, uh -huh. like, that one, definitely not. Well, and then you, I think it... Oh, hold on. Yeah, if you redid that one, you wouldn't have Adam to lay your rope down either. Yeah, I know. It's true. <laughs> I mean, that was a big help. Yeah, Adam <laughs> taking it from being like this to like this. Crazy, yeah. bro. Crazy. And like, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that thinks, like... I, I get it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, everyone likes to talk about something stuff, has to be something no matter yeah, what. Something yeah. has got to be something. But that, yeah, that double under thing, the back of my rope was coming off. There's like a little thing that you can unscrew and put weight in. So like you can do like weighted double unders. It's a cool thing of the rope. Yeah. If you and put that, weight in, it's cheating and it goes so much faster and you never mess that, it up. That part was coming off. So even if that fell off, which it did, it didn't affect anything. It's just off. And I was like, an ideal world that doesn't fall off because it's not like my ropes coming apart or anything like that. It was just the end part of my handle was coming off and it wouldn't have done anything. So I asked Adam to put it back on or just take it off and like get it out of the way. But anyway, so week two, no, <laughs> wouldn't have done anything. Uh, and then I kind of come down to week one and three. And I think there's, I think on both of them, I had like a 20 second chance to go faster on both mm -hmm. of them about, I would pick week three just because you're never going to see a workout like week one in quarterfinals, semifinals games. Mm -hmm. Like it's too simple. It's too easy. It's like, like if you see a sprinty workout at regionals games, it's like echo bike sled or like it's something like super quick like that. Yeah, like yeah, those yeah. movements are so, or a heavier dumbbell or something. Like I just don't think that one translates to what we see later in the season. So week three, I would pick just because in that sense, I think there's equal opportunity for me to do better in both, mm -hmm. but I'd like to see what happens in week three, especially after hitting it. And I think I paced the back half pretty well. Um, so just kind of be like kind of sending it in that first half and kind of seeing if I can still hold on to that pace. So, so for you, like if you were to redo week three, the thing you feel you would get most is just, you have something you feel you could show on that workout yeah. And you just want to see if it's true yeah. or not. Yeah, I, I I blew up in the first five rounds, but my grip blew up, which I'd like to think it's because of the grip because once I switched them, the muscle-ups felt a felt lot fine. better. So I would think that yeah. if I switched it, for one, I'd feel, even if I went the same time in the first workout, I think I'd feel better. You wouldn't want to feel like you felt and get that. Yeah, same. and yeah. then when I did the second part, I broke the fourth round of muscle-ups into four three. I think I would have done that unbroken, and I think I just would have been faster on the first part. That's so, dope. okay, but who knows? I mean, I could have redo it and do. No, work. it's just it's just dope to, because like you, the way you think about working out, I won't say it's different than everybody, but it's nice to have conversations with you because you do think about how things are done. You don't just kind of grip and rip and just go. It's like no. there's, I won't say methodology to, but there is theory behind what you do. I yeah. think it's interesting. It'd be curious though. Dude, uh, Adam texted me earlier. We we're talking about uh, some of the times for week three. I think Yona Koski yeah. did 803. Yeah, <laughs> I just saw that. Yeah. Which is crazy. crazy. What? 803. Bro, I thought, I thought Cody's time was going to be like, hell am I? What was his time? He was like a, a 20 ish, 824 or something yeah. like that. Like somewhere think, in that I think, range. I uh, think Colton went like eight. eight 15 or 816 or something yeah, like 16, that. I, think. And I thought 18, that was going to be because Noah 18. went 819. Oh, yeah. No, I, thought, I thought Noah was like 830. Yeah, uh, Noah was, was 830. Who, who was there? Was someone the fastest? I, and I wasn't, I wasn't really got looking. one second faster. I'm curious. I was talking to Dallin. It's pretty close uh, to my time before this. <laughs> As Dallin put his score in, <laughs> Pepper. <laughs> Yo, I like what you said after um, week one where you said when Dallas did the workout, like, or Dallas said it. Like when Justin finished, this is where I was when Justin finished. And we said that like, Hey, where were you guys at five? Whatever Colton's time was, where were you at this time? It's this week three was kind of like that as well. Uh, like, dang, Dallin didn't do good. Dallin had a, D Dallin was in first place going into this week. I saw him post on social media and stuff. Like how many times am I going to redo this workout? To oh, get first? dang. Cause, Cause I get a chance to get first. to get first. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he still had a really fast time, but. I mean, he would have had to go 8.30 probably to win the Open. What was his time? 9.50. Yes, yeah, I think he did it probably the first time. And no matter what, he probably, like, went out hot and kind of blew up. 
Because, like, he probably went out at the pace to get 8.30 or yeah. sub-9 yeah. to have a shot. And he probably blew, blew up. I'm, I would assume he's capable of going faster than that. Dang, dude, to have it like that. I think Colton did it again. He got 8.07. That oh, wasn't, for real? I'm pretty sure that wasn't the time on the Saban podcast. Nah, yeah. 8.18. Yeah, so he got 8.07. 8.07 is his score on I here. think he probably thought Jeez. he might have a chance to... Dude, Colton almost won two out of the three workouts. That's dude, crazy. He got, yeah, he got second place. Dude, on that, I mean, so. same thing with Jonikowski, though. You know, yeah. he got second week two and then first week three. Yo, that's crazy. crazy. Week one, he got 27th, which is 601. Did he win it overall? Yeah. Oh, I mean, so as of now, Yona? Yeah. I would assume most scores are in. I'm trying to think of who's up there that has not put in a score. I wasn't really looking at the leaderboard much. I actually don't know where I'm sitting. I'm don't, in 28th. You are for real? That's a lot better than what I thought. Well, hold on. Is this going to be your best? What's your no, best open finish? I got third. You did? Damn. That's not that was crazy. I did bad. an open announcement that year. I think I had a chance. If I redid the open workout that year, I think I could have won. Because me and Saxon, or maybe I got second. I, went, I got second or third. I don't remember. But me and Saxon That's went not, head to head on, the, know you on, on the deadlift burpee workout. <laughs> and I beat him in it. So I think if, I, if it stayed that way, I would have beat him in the open. But he redid he it? He redid it. And then beat me. And you were just like, oh, I'm on to the next. I mean, it was kind of similar to this year. I mean, it was top 10% moved on. It's like, I'm not worried about not making top 10%. Yeah. So. I, do you, because you kind of came up with sanctionals and stuff. No, I got like 60th or, last year, 50th. And I thought for sure this year I was having a worse open than I did last year. And he's top 30. <laughs> I'm excited about quarterfinals. Not yeah. not like oh I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to hear from you what you that you you said a little brief. Well, here's the difference between quarterfinals and and the open. What do you think? Um, going into this year, yeah. What are what are your goals going into quarterfinals? And and then from there, what are some of the things for people who maybe didn't make quarterfinals in last year and made it this year? What are some of the things that you think change going from quarterfinals? To, or open yeah. the quarterfinals. So, like, I'd just say, I mean, the, the goal is to, to freaking win it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you, you want to go out there and have the best performance possible. Obviously, that's not what I'm training for. I'm training for the games, and I want to be on top of the podium at the games. Like, mm -hmm. I'm doing, I'm making every decision possible to do that, you know? And, but for quarterfinals, I think it's really similar to the open, if you look at it, like, I think week three workout is vastly different than the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like it's a different type of athlete that does week three, you know, yeah. like there's, I think that workout significantly harder than the first two, not like pain wise, but like you have to have skill, yeah. you have to move well, mm -hmm. you have to have pacing. Like there's so many more elements that come into the And workout. there's a layer of grit with that. Yeah. And there's a layer week. of grit. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like week one where it's just like, dude, it's 50 pound dumbbell snatch and burpees. Like everybody can literally do that. Yeah. Whereas like week three, it's like, dude, some people can't thrust or 135. Some people can't do muscle ups. Yep. And then especially you combine the two, like it's very, very tough. And people who thought they could thrust at 135 and then started thrusting at 135. Yeah. It feels different than <laughs> feels when you think different. about it. <laughs> so I think when you go to the quarterfinals, there's a lot of workouts like that where pacing matters, pacing matters, strategy matters, technique matters. Like, there's so many layers to each workout where like you really need to know what you're doing. And I think that's, what's really exciting. That's why I love competing. Cause so many of the workouts, they matter like that, you know, like there's, mm -hmm. um, and plus you're doing six workouts in four days, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you don't really have a big chance to redo it. Your recovery matters, your, your nutrition matters. And I think that's, the fun part about yeah, more competing. more levels of fitness there's so start much to, to stack yeah, on it and yeah. i think that's why like without even like i think you crushed every week of the open you know but like i knew from without a fact like week three was going to be your best score yeah because because i, I think too. that i think you're similar to me in the sense where like you're an athlete you move really well and you have the capacity to do everything it's not like ring muscle ups come up and you're stumped yeah and, but you'll smash a rowing run workout like you're you're well-rounded and i think when you get into the quarterfinals the more well-rounded athlete matters because you're going to still have these guys that have home runs but yeah. like the people that are the best are going to be well-rounded like you have to be good at everything it's weak like in the open it's like every workout has like this huge significance 
And then you look at the end, you're like, oh, like, like to me, like, I thought I wasn't doing good because week one wasn't a good score. Week two, I had the mess up and like the margins on that one were so low. Yeah. And then week three, I didn't do well. And I was just like, yeah, like it's whatever. But you look at the overall, and it's like, oh, well, I actually didn't do terrible. You just saw it right now. Yeah, I was like, oh, shoot. Like, that's actually <laughs> not too bad. Um, but quarterfinals, man, it's, it's super cool to see that. And for people at the gym that have lots of people that are doing quarterfinals, you really get to see that separation start to happen. Yeah. And it's, it's so cool to see. I mean, the workouts, I mean, we didn't see handstand walks. We didn't see handstand pushups. We didn't see, we're going to see rope climbs, GHDs, ring muscle ups. Yep. Um, like probably some sorts of lunging. We didn't have a max. Like yep. there's so much that we didn't see. And like all those things, when those come up in like class workouts, they stump a lot of people. Yeah. Or like, one, you might shine in one of them, but then the other, like you might shine at handstand pushups and handstand walks, but you're going to suck at the lift or yeah. whatever it is. Whereas like quarterfinals, man, there's all of that. Yeah. And it's just so cool. I mean, I like two years ago, they had like the, the other total with like the bench dead squat that's or the tight. bench dead overhead squat. And it's that's like, tight. dude, like stuff like that's just so cool. And it's in a weekend, like you have to hit your maxes, but you still have other workouts to do. And you kind of get to strategize a little bit about which workout goes first and mm -hmm. the order. And it's, uh, that's, what's fun and enjoyable. So I just got so excited about quarterfinals. I'm I bro, thinking about like, it. I, I'm like, like so I was, excited I was excited to talk to you about it. Cause I have no experience with it. And it's dope that like dude, more layers like, of man, fitness get like, involved. My favorite thing about, crossfit and competing is like talking about workout strategy i love it too and that's why i don't think i could ever coach crossfit classes because that's i would like have five or ten minutes of the class designated to like talking about and strategy. then and then you'll the get those is, people like, who just want to not think i yeah, just want to do the workout do you know so, and like bro. that's why man like when i when i'm done competing like i want to have a program and i want to coach people that want to compete yeah like it doesn't it, matter like like what you're wanting to compete for but i want to talk about people or doesn't matter what you want to compete for. I want to coach people that want to compete in CrossFit. Yeah. And want to do the best they can in CrossFit. It doesn't matter what level you are. Um, doesn't matter if you want to like make it to quarterfinals, if you want to make it to the games, you want to make it to semis, like whatever it is, those people are just so fun because man, like strategy matters so much. And the and more I levels love, the I love variety. geeking out about it. And like when we go down there for I'm gonna head down to Adam's gym for quarterfinals, like Me too. Stop playing with me. I know what so I'm saying. All You're right, coming yeah, out. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Trista's there, Max uh -huh, there, and uh -huh. like I'm fortunate enough that I've learned so much from Adam. Like Adam's here and I feel like I'm below him. I'm and like, right like here. <laughs> Yeah, and like and like Trista's eighteen years old. Mac is newer to CrossFit than me. And I feel like there's a lot of value I could provide to them just by like yeah, strategy. You're, hey, you're the big dog. You're the mindset. big brother in these situations, bro. But like I love geeking out about it. And yep. like me and Adam do it all the time. Like workout strategy, talking about it. Like literally the workout gets announced and then he calls me. He's like, hey, what's what's their time going to be? And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And I think about it. And I'm like, all right, well, this would be my time. And then this is the time that's possible. And then where do you think they're going to go? And like yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun to think about that. And then – in quarterfinals, when you get to have those conversations, then you got to go out there and do it. Is like, it's crazy. <laughs> we got to wrap this thing up. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, I'm we're to, we're at an hour right now. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to look. I gotta I gotta have a interesting. Dallas, have you been watching any Neil deGrasse Tyson stuff? No, I just save everything for this moment. I like how I Justin will fresh. show up with something, and and we just kind of hit it. And I like that it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. Is it? I got one. No, guys, Tyson. Okay, that's, okay, let's keep here, it. Here we are. All right. Yeah. If you leave Earth at the age of 15 in a spaceship at the speed of light and spend five years in space, when you get back on Earth, you will be 20 years old, and all your friends who were 15 when you left will be 65 years old. This phenomenon is known as time dilation in physics. Hold on. How long were you? How long were you gone? Five years. And you left at fifteen. You'd come back at twenty. So and everyone else would be sixty-five years. Speed old. of light, two and a half years away, two and a half years back. Yeah. Or no, no, no. I don't think. I think it's when you. Hmm. But I, I don't think it's anything that's like fact. It's mm -hmm. just like with the knowledge that we have, that should. That's what yeah. should happen. Yeah. Because it's crazy. Time is relative to who's affecting. Yeah, and I think, like, at the speed of light, though, like, time moves slower. Yeah, because you're moving faster. 
Yeah, but I don't even that doesn't you, really make sense to me. Hold on. You seen uh you seen um Interstellar, correct? Yeah. Okay. That it kind of explains it in that. In if you In a way, yeah, they do. You huh? know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. like I could come back and be the same age as yeah. you. Um That's my Neil grass thing for the week. I, I saw something from Mr. Tyson as well, or DeGrasse Tyson. Um that that if you point or ninety nine point nine 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 if you were driving a car at ninety nine point nine 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 speed of light speed of light and you turn your headlights on, you wouldn't it wouldn't affect anything. Like nothing would change until you are actually traveling at the speed of light. Because they're like, what happens if you're in a car <laughs> and oh. you turn your headlights on and you're going at ninety nine point nine 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 like do you see the light? Does the light affect is the light affected at all or not? And he's saying until you're going the speed of light, it's just normal headlights, bro. Like, it doesn't matter. And the thing that helped my brain was to be like, the melting point is below 32 degrees, bro. You got to be below 32. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're, you know, 0. 0.0001 over 32, then it's not it's not going to melt. It's a freezing point. Or excuse me, you got to be below to freeze. Um, But that's kind of, I don't know. If you had an option, let me ask you this. If you had an option to travel two and a half years away from Earth at the speed of light and then travel two and a half years back to Earth at the speed of light, do you do that? You only age five years, so Justin would be what, 30? How old are you? 25. So Justin comes back, he's 30. Yeah. We're all 70, 80. <laughs> do, you, do you take that option or no? Like, no. is that something? You want to no. stay with your people? Yeah, I stay with my people. Okay. You wouldn't want to see, just like see might lift all that stuff up. Dallas, you take that option or no? No. His kids would be for Yeah. Nah, dude. Your nah. kids would be older than you. Exactly. That'd be weird. Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> like, what's up, old kids? Yeah, I'm not taking that. Alright, let's wrap either. this thing up. Yeah. Play the music, oh. man. Yo, we got quarters. A month. Stay tuned. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. You got plans? Adam's coming out in like two weeks. Hey, you need to get back on the pod. That'll be tight. Yeah.